There are lots of ways to cob or cut out a background in Photoshop. I'm going to show you one of my favorite methods today, which is using a layer mask. And the reason why I like to use a layer mask, if at any time in editing this picture or in using it in InDesign, if I decide I want to go back and add more of a picture, I can do that, even though I cut it out several steps. And I don't have to redo a lot of extra work. So let's look at it. Here's a picture of Lola, one of my friend's dogs, and first thing I'm going to do with Lola's picture is I'm going to go up to image and I'm going to duplicate it because I never want to work on my original picture. I have to assume that picture is a negative and that I don't have another copy. After I've duplicated Lola, I'm going to come over and I'm also uh, going to duplicate my background. And to do that, I just pull it down here onto duplicate. And notice I now have a background copy and my background. When anything is in italics, I cannot alter it. So um, I'm going to leave this locked and I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to see it. Now, what most people could start doing at this point is just taking out pieces of this picture and hitting delete. And the problem with this mess with this method is later on if you want to add something back, you can't do that. You have to undo all the steps in between. So, what I'm going to do instead is create a layer mask using my layers palette. Background is turned off. I'm going to come here and I'm going to come down to the bottom and I am going to choose this little box with the circle in it, which creates the layer mask. Now notice in this palette, if I click here, I'm working in the picture. If I'm clicking here, I'm clicking, I'm working in the layer mask. So for this, I am going to work in the layer mask. One concept you need to remember, and let's come over here to the tools palette, is black hides and white reveals. What the heck do I mean by that? Well, let's take my brush tool right now and notice that I'm using the color black. If I just click on this, notice it hides. I'm working inside the layer mask. If I hold down Option and click here, I can see that what I'm doing is painting in black. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And notice anything I take out here in black, and I'm just going to click back on the picture now, and I have cut this out. Notice I've also started to take out part of the dog's legs down here. So to put it back, I can swap my colors. Black hides, white reveals. I can come back in here with my white brush. Whoops, Command Z. It's painting in white because I'm not working in my layer mask. I come back here, black hides, white reveals, using white. I can go through here and I can paint this back in. So a more exact way than trying to go around here, which never really works, and I am just hitting the X key, by the way, by itself, and it toggles back and forth between the black and the white. I'm going to come up here to where Lola is, and I am going to use the lasso tool on her ears. And I can simply type the L for lasso, and then notice when I go to the lasso tool, I can go to the magnetic lasso. Whenever I have high contrast, I can use the magnetic lasso tool. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around here. And I love CS6 because notice you get a little arrow right now, which is telling you exactly where you're going. And I'm going to click here, click here, go click, click, and close the path. I can now use my brush. I can go through here, and it's going to cut out just this part of the ear. Command D to deselect. Notice that I'm getting a very hard line where if I look at Lola, the bottom part of her ear, I'm getting a really fuzzy edge. And this is because when I use the lasso tool, 
if I look at the toolbar up here, I didn't feather it. Feather it will give you that fuzzy edge. So let's look at this again. Let's compare it. This time I'm going to feather two pixels. I'm going to use the same tool, the magnetic lasso. I'm going to click here. I'm going to run it right along the edge of Lola, Lola's ear. Click, come out here, click, come up here, click, click, close the path. Use my brush tool. And notice I can cut this out. When I notice the nice fuzzy edge instead of the edge right here. Now this is the advantage of the layer mask. I can, using white, I can paint her ear back in right here. I can then go back to my lasso tool. I'm feathered two pixels. I can start down here and I can use this high contrast. Come down here, it's grabbing the edge. I can click to get with these little paths right here. Come here, click, come up here, click, come up here, click, click, close the path, type the letter B, and now I can delete all this. One problem I do get into is this little overlap right here. And so I might actually want to come in here or use a smaller brush and clean up this spot right here. I would actually prefer to use the last so right in here though so that I get a nice clean edge. For some of these areas, don't want to use the magnetic lasso tool, I could come here and use the polygon lasso. Notice polygon lasso, I'm still going to have to choose two pixels and pixels are the default so I can just type two there and start working. I'm going to go click 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 and remember as you learned in your geometry class all arcs are made from segments so I can make this look pretty natural by clicking at regular intervals. And I almost never use the round lasso like in KidPix because I find that the segment lasso works a lot better. Click, click, use my brush here, and I'm going to make this brush a whole lot bigger. And I'm going to come through and finish this. After I've cut out Lola, all the way and it looks like my picture is done. I want to make sure that I really have taken out everything out of the picture and sometimes I don't realize this until I've gone into InDesign, placed the picture, done a text wrap and when I go to print a copy I see some black smudgy lines and let's find out where those come from. So what I want to do is put a white layer behind the cutout. And to do that, I come back to my layers palette, come down here to the bottom, and choose a new layer. With this layer, I am going to make sure it is between my background layer and my top layer. If it's up here, I just drag it there. With that layer highlighted and working in white, I can take my paint bucket, and the paint bucket is behind the gradient tool, if you didn't know that, and paint the whole layer white. When I do that and zoom in, I notice a couple of things. Notice there's some black here and there's some black here. If I hold down Option and click on my layer mask, I can see why, because I didn't cut out this little piece here, and I didn't cut this out here. Get it ready for Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to throw away the layer in between so that I have the checkerboard transparent background. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to do a Save As. And I'm either going to save it as a TIFF or a JPEG for Photoshop, depending on what I need it as. And um, that's it.
I also want to save this as a Photoshop copy because if there is anything wrong with it, I want to be able to go back to the Photoshop um, and make my alterations there. That's it. How to do a cob using a layer mask. Remember, work in the layer mask and black hides, white reveals.